right, let's have a look at the mango tree. I'm going to have a look at it in where it's an isolated tree, which is relatively unusual. This is much more what you'd expect to see where there's many, any number of trees all intertwined and totally tangled. So what I'm hoping is that is becoming apparent to you is that many of the trees have similar looking foliage and similar looking bark. So you've got to try and suss out what is the particular characteristic of a specific tree. If you have a look, for example, at the olive tree, the acacia tree and the eucalyptus tree, these particular varieties look fairly similar. With the acacia tree, of course, you have a flat umbrella-like foliage, whereas with the eucalyptus tree, or at least this species, the foliage is much more rounded and in sort of florets, almost like a cauliflower. Now, all right, what's the characteristic that stands out for the mango tree. Well it's certainly not the leaves here because these are very similar to all sorts of trees and bushes that I can think of and that's coming from somebody who knows next to nothing about uh, trees and bushes and the like. But what its big characteristic is above all is the way the roots grow out from above the base of the bark and that it grows in very wet soil. In fact, it grows at the edge of water and in water, and it doesn't seem to matter much whether it's salt water or fresh water. So that's the characteristic that we're gonna concentrate on when we paint this. And if you bear that in mind for any of the trees or indeed any of the landscape elements, always ask yourself what's special about this landscape element that's gonna make it stand out from something else. Right, now first of all, I'm going to cover this close-up of the mangrove tree so you can see what it looks like in isolation. And then, after that, we'll do a quick sketch of what it looks like in a much more natural environment where there's any number of trees and the roots are completely and utterly tangled together, digging down into the mud and the sand. Now, firstly, I've produced a mix of raw sienna and lemon yellow and a little touch of ultramarine to give us this reasonably bright green for some of the leaves. For the leaves in a slightly darker shadow area I've added a little bit more ultramarine blue to the same mix just to make it darker. And for the roots to make things a bit darker I've mixed together ultramarine blue and light red in different proportions. Here I've put much more blue in and at this half here I've put much more of the light red in. Now leaving those little flecks of white in the middle helps to highlight or create highlights on the leaves that are very useful to depict sunlight. You can see I'm not uh, worrying too much at all about creating all sorts of uh, detail. I'm just letting the brush skip over this. I'm going to bring in just a little bit of the darker green now here and there while it's still wet. Right now what I'm going to do is just paint some of these leaves. Some of them will be in complete shadow, some of them will be in partial shadow. Twigs on this particular bush are already brown so I'm just going to just have a hint of those coming through here and there. You don't need too many because they all disappear into and amongst the leaves. I'm just doing it a bit darker on the right hand side because that's generally going to be in shadow. Likewise I'll bring some of the the blue-grey mix in here underneath to give us a bit of 3D effect and then a bit more shadow down here and I'll just put a little bit of very very pale ultramarine blue running through the carefully through the background. Right you can see it's not difficult at all to create the impression of reflections We'll look at that, as I say, in more detail in, a, in another DVD. Now let's look in less detail, but in a more natural situation where you've got a group of mangrove trees have totally intertwined their, their roots with each other into the water. Now you may be able to see that I've put masking fluid on these uh, roots, or in fact in some cases, certainly with the reflections in the water, I've actually painted the roots with masking fluid. I haven't even used a pencil. What we're going to do is to get some of that ultramarine blue and the light red, quite dark this time, quite strong, 
and we're simply going to paint it over the base here of these roots like that and you can see how dark that is you'll have to imagine that this is a sort of a a river bank maybe this time we'll have a little bit of greenery just behind the uh, the bank you can see now why you must wait for the uh, paint to dry because if you start rubbing this hard to get the masking fluid off you're going to spread and smudge paint everywhere right now I'm just going to use various shades of this grey, a bit more red here, a bit more blue there, got two shades right away. I'll probably bring in the raw sienna and create yet another shade there. Now I changed the rigger here. I wasn't going to use that originally, but I just thought I can use this to show you how you can use it for foliage in much the same way you use it for rocks. Right, I've now added some light and shade and I've put these reflections in here which are really a reverse, or more or less a reverse of these. And I've done them a little bit darker with just a hint of some reflections in the water. The water is much stiller because I'm assuming this is a, a freshwater uh, lagoon somewhere. I've added some greys and some darks to that as well. And that um, gives me the basis for the trees. And I'm just gonna finish off now with the rigger, just scrubbing as I did with the rocks. Now all I'm doing, you can see, is getting some of that light green color and scrubbing and letting it dance and bounce here and there to create a little bit of light foliage. Right, I've added a few darker colors in the same way. And there we are. You've got two mangrove trees for the price of one.